Well, Fanny, great to have you with us. Uh, you know the first question. You're always told what it is. Uh, what does it mean for you to have your sport and your faith connected to play connected? What's your answer to that starter? Hi, Graham. Thanks. It's good to be with you guys. Um, yeah, so I think if you look at my journey, um, you know, it's it's undeniable that God opened doors for me to to come into um, sport for people with disabilities. Um, yeah, so that was one of the things. And um, thinking back of my um, uh, your know, Paralympic career was that I, I wanted to do this with God. Um, and and being a Christian, it was never like you're a Christian off the track and now coming onto the track, you, you have a different identity. That was one, you know, like I was a Christian on and off the track. And that was my first identity. Firstly, um, a son of God. And then secondly, a sports person. Um, and, and you know, just starting it with Jesus and remember ending it, um, thinking of back of, of Rio 2016, standing on the track, just imagining Jesus being on the, the finish line, waiting there for me, and um, running into Jesus um, on the finish line. Um, and I think what also made it a bit easier was I had a lot of uh, friends training with me that was Christians. Um, and so, so we were kind of a unit and people respected us for, for being Christians. And, and it was also something new guys coming in uh, knowing that, that they had an example to look up to. Um, yeah, so, so I think it made it easier being in a group that, that had lots of be believers in. Yeah, that, I, I've always found that interesting, funny, and knowing you for a number of years, that uh, the tightness of that training group, elite training group uh, in South Africa, uh, made a big impact on so many people because it was easy to join in with Christians in, in training and playing and see what it looked like in a comfortable way. But we'll yeah. we'll come back to that uh, Rio 2016 as indeed uh, uh, hugely successful times in Beijing in 08 and London 2012 as well as Rio 16 and we'll unpack some of this then if you're happy with that. Let me take you back then to where you came in. Uh, it, it, you're born with cerebral palsy. You're competing uh, with able-bodied children at school. And I've heard you say a number of times, you, you never saw yourself as, as disabled. And yet as an 11-year-old, a, a teacher says to you, you, you should think about the disabled team. And that was a, a jolt, a jolt to your comprehension of who you were and how sport would work. Yeah, so just to, to take it back, it was grade 11. So I was 17. Um, yeah, so, and, and I mean, my thing was, like, I had lots of disappointments growing up, knowing that, like, so I, I knew there was something wrong with me, but I never saw it as a disability. And, and just for uh, interest's sake, CP is, it's just an a injury at birth on your cerebellum that uh, basically sends uh, messages to your, to your muscles. So that's delayed and um, much weaker than my, than my left side. Um, and also causes spasticity in stress situation, things like that. Yeah, so 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 it was a big thing for me to make the team. And in grade eleven, I, I actually made the athletics able body team. <laughs> so so yeah, I always said that that if they if I never achieved anything else, that would have been enough, you know. Um, yeah, that's why I'm always so amazed of. Yeah, just what God has done throughout my career and, and giving me the opportunity to run and do sports, you know. Yeah. That's a pivotal moment because being uh, having cerebral palsy, but being clearly very, very, very able uh, and making the team uh, at grade 11, a 17 year old. What can you remind us or, or, or help us think through? Can you help us think through? The, how you made the decision that you would head in the direction then, uh, maybe with the ambition to the Paralympics? When did that start? What was the process of this shift as you found yourself thinking, okay, I could be really, really good at this actually? Yeah. So so I remember I made a team. Then my coach said, okay, but don't try it for the disabled team. And I was, so I, went on the bus with my my school team so that was all able bodies and we got to the competition 
and then they had a section for for para sports or, or disabled um, athletics and so all of a sudden people were asking me so why are you running with them and i was like uh like i'm also not exactly sure what my disability is but i know i have one so i can run here but so it was also kind of for me thrown into the the the, the big end of the pool um uh, and and that's where I kind of had to start accepting that I have a disability, you know, like like first ex- accepting it, but that took quite quite a few years and quite a few like years of 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 participating and and just almost getting into the community of of, of people with disabilities, you know, so just to like um you know, understand how it works and all those kind of things, and and then yeah, but I think so. So I realized when, when my, my teacher asked me that it would be an opportunity for me to, to run with people that has, that's on the same level than me, you know? So, so I, I immediately saw it as a, as an opportunity and, and it was so then that, that a lot of doors opened for me, uh, when I started, um, yes. How quickly, uh, well, it was quick. It was pretty fast progression once you made that decision, uh, and and you were certainly in with a shout very quickly uh, of Beijing uh, in two oh eight. Tell us about first of all heading for Athens in two oh four because you had a chance of that, didn't you? Uh, so two thousand and four was was so two thousand and three. I started with disabled sports. Two thousand and four was my my first um, national championships, and so and then they selected obviously a long list of, of people uh, going for for 2004, but I didn't make the team. So so when I didn't make the team, but but I knew I, I was considered to be maybe be part of it. Um, I I realized that okay if if I work hard, um, I can make the team for 2008, and that was also when then. Um, we moved uh, regions from uh, the free state, middle of the country, to uh, more of the, 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 the Cape Town area, Stellenbosch, where I, where I um, started studying in, in 2006. So I took kind of a gap in 2005, 2006. I, I started um, yes, training then with my coach, Zan Ferreira, and, and a few other para athletes um, you know, with the vision of 2008 in my in mind and i remember then my dream was whenever someone asked me was that i want to make the team for the 2008 paralympics uh we've interviewed suzanne uh on this podcast series and of course an outstanding woman outstanding coach uh fantastic providence ending up at stellenbosch and meeting her and joining the training group that that process uh it comes very quick then, doesn't it? Really, you're 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 an international athlete very quickly, uh, and mm. a big athlete. But it is 2008 in Beijing where, wow! I mean, it really it really gets going, doesn't it? Because you win the gold in the hundred and the two hundred meters uh, in Beijing. In the process leading up to that, what was the balancing act of your faith and sport there as you dreamt that? dream and achieved it w- were there stresses in that process yeah I, I think just to, to to maybe also say like you know we growing up um really trying out sports and and really you know having having big expectations and then almost all the time being disappointed i got to a place where i said okay well i don't think i have uh, a career in sports um, even though I saw a lot of my family members um, brother especially Chris you know just excelling in sport but I, I made I, I kind of made a decision in my heart that I'm going to do it because I, I love it um, and it's okay if I don't don't get anywhere and that was I think so crazy for me is that when I had that um, you know, just attitude where God came in and in turn what I thought was you know, my disability, it was kind of, you know, something that's holding me back. God turned it around into a blessing and saying, but but it's that exact thing that you thought was a curse. I will turn it into a blessing. And so it was, for me, it was really 
kind of a, a journey of thankfulness, but also not not being able to deny that it was God giving me this opportunity and and just like, but really as a gift, you know. So I, I saw it as a gift that that God has given me, and and that I can really run with and really go all out, you know, put everything into it and just love it, you know, and enjoy it. So so that was kind of the I think the faith part of it. Um, especially those those first years. Obviously, there's there's a lot of of tension and and a lot of stress as well leading up to you know knowing you go to the Paralympic Games, seeing the Olympics, knowing that you're going to be there in in a few weeks time, and even seeing it from from a young age. Um, you know, yes, there's there's a lot of of stress and tensions, but but seeing our God, just as I, I was standing so on the track and maybe a few weeks before that almost getting anxiety when just thinking of the race but coming out onto the track and just having peace you know like like there was this moment where we went to go watch the the swimming uh and then the first race of, of my friend Arun Furi, um watching him on the track and being in that stadium wanting to have all these you know just the anxiety come but then God just like kind of pushed it out and I could just really relax in that moment and I knew I would be okay um you know doing this in front of you know a, a big crowd of people we've talked or you've mentioned your your Christian faith right through this interview and of course it's integrated into everything you are and, and have been and will be uh it sounds as if you had a, a personal living faith as quite a young man but what's what's the origin of that how did that yeah, so I think since a, a, a young boy, like I wanted to, you know, um, know that I'm I'm a child of God. That was a big desire in my heart. Um, but I didn't know how to do that, you know. Um, like, and my only way of, of of thinking or knowing how to do that was trying to live a good life, but but in that same way, just failing a lot, but also in a sense having spiritual pride. Because I um, would look at others and think, well, I'm at least not that bad, or you know, at least I'm not doing that. Um, and but I was there was always a big uncertainty in my heart of of knowing that that I'm that I'm God, you know. And and even when when I had opportunities to 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 you know give my life to the Lord, it was always I was never sure until I was. About yeah, you know, sixteen, seventeen. I remember just speaking to someone, saying, "But I, I don't know why, but but like I always feel like I need to commit my life to the Lord if if someone would give me that opportunity." And when when we spoke, and he just said, "But you know, it's it's not about what you know your works. It's about what Christ has done for you on the cross, and it's His blood." Um, that sets you free and, and, and gives you salvation. And and I knew then, you know, I I don't have to ever like like try and end my salvation again. I can know that it's what God has done for me. Um and and that was I think my my first steps of of just um that salvation process. You know, but even after that, although I didn't doubt anymore, there was no one really discipled me, showing me how to walk with Christ. So yes, going to university, that was the process of um, just being discipled, where someone would take that responsibility of, of mentoring me and just yeah, going to the, and, and understanding that God disciplines through love and, and his love would, would help me, yeah, would discipline me. So where I normally, you know, saw discipline as as that God is, I didn't see it as love, but but yeah. So so only then, like realizing that God says in His, in His Word that uh, those He loves, He will discipline, um, and 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 whom He accepts as sons. So that changed a lot of my yeah, you know, just understanding about Christianity and 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 God's God as a Father. And I, I, I can really also say that, you know, through my athletics career, I really got to know God as a father 
um yes and his and his love for his children through through just yeah my career in him showing himself to me as a father you've mentioned there the clarity the growing clarity of god as your father and how the father's discipline was one of real love to you have you to explain a bit more about how that developed in your own life yeah, yeah so i think just um growing up i didn't really experience that much discipline uh, from my parents so so it, and and also so when when someone would maybe uh, correct me then then i would see it as you know not not as love um and and i think yes yeah, so so growing into varsity you know making mistakes when i was corrected i would see that as as you know not as love like like but rather as hate. So I always felt like if I was in the wrong and, 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 and I felt conviction from God that there was a, it was like, like he was not happy with me. Um, you know, he's, 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 he's not loving, but, but more like distant. Um, and, and I realized that, and, and I actually was, was really struggling with, but am I then a child of God? You know, if I, if I, if I are experiencing so much, um, you know, discipline, um but what's happening here and then it was like i was struggling with that and then when i read that scripture in i think it's it's hebrews 12 uh, verse 5 where it says that god's discipline those he loves and whom he accepts as sons so so when i read that i realized oh what has been happening the whole time is that god is disciplining me because i'm his son that is that is why he's disciplining me because I'm his son, and that is what a father does. He disciplines. Um, yes. Yeah, so 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 then it 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 was actually a proof that 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 I am his son, and that's what is happening here. It's, it wasn't proof that that I'm that I'm distant or I'm, I'm not seen as a son. So so if that makes sense, um, and and maybe to where I saw God more as a father in in my sporting de- career was especially because when if 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 you're on top and and you're performing well, then the crowd is cheering. But as soon as you you know you lose or you you make a mistake, the crowd will be be bashing you. You know. So, um, what I experienced with God was when when those things happened, I always experienced Him as as very near, and where He would walk with me through the highs and the lows. He He, he was He was never like um, separating himself when when things got tough, and we a lot of the times with the crowd or you know fans would 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 be distant when you're not doing good, you know, or they don't know how to handle it, you know, like people would would even not engage with with almost that that you know disappointments. They would rather stay away where God was really in it, you know, and and in that time, uh, I could I could experience him as as being close or, or just getting to know him better, you know, because because I I could really run to him in 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 those times where where yeah I, I just felt a, a lot of of yeah despair, you know. That that's really helpful, and uh, and as you describe the way you came to a personal living faith, the, the the lessons of learning discipleship, it makes an awful lot of sense. Of the way you describe getting ready for Beijing, uh, mm. you're watching your friends swim, you, the Lord's in this. He has you there. He, you're focused on Him and what He's given you to do, and your calling in life. You, you make an awful lot of sense of that by telling us the backstory. So, thank you for that. So let's jump then into Beijing, not watching somebody else compete a few days before, but you competing. So uh, double gold in Beijing. Talk us through yeah, it. Were you, yeah, no, were you expected to get that? Were you expected or expecting to win gold? I had a good, uh, like, world ranking. Um, I think I was second. Um, so I did obviously go into the games expectant. Um, but but obviously with a lot of, a lot of nerves and and you know not not knowing what's going to happen. But but I remember running my um my my semi-finals um yeah running a good race and then after me um 
was was um, the Chinese guy, my Yuxi. And I remember just you know, looking at that race. I think I had 11.9 and he ran something like 11.2. And immediately my thought was just, okay, I need to settle for, for silver. Um, but going back to my room, I just realized, okay, but, um, you know, I'm going to go for to run to win. If I don't win, it's fine. But I'm not going to go into the games thinking, oh, I'm, 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 I'm going to settle for silver. Um, and I remember the, the song that, that my coach gave me was, um, God will lift up your head soon and enjoy. Um, and I just played that song and, and I just said, well, I'm going to go for this. You know, and, and I'm actually going to believe that I'm going to win this race. I, I, I went into that race believing that, you know, God, if if he wants to, he can open a door for me. But but if, if it doesn't happen, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to go full out. Um, and crazy enough, when we got into the pool rooms for the final, um, the Chinese guy was not there. Um, so the head classifier went to go look at, at him and, and said, but he's not in the right class. So, um, yeah, very crazy. That doesn't, that doesn't happen. You know, if you, if you have a permanent class coming to Paralympics, like that's it, like it, it doesn't change, you know? So, so there was a real crazy story for me and it just felt like, like God opening up the door and, and creating this miracle, you know? Um, yeah. And it, it, it also felt like I was giving, given to two gold medals at, at my first Paralympic Games, you know. Um, yeah, so so very crazy. The 200 meter, you know, um, being in front in, in the straight and then just my legs started cramping up and I could, could hear the guys that came, came up. But yeah, I just, just I held on and, and went over the line first. So yeah, so a lot of, you know, good memories of, of Beijing 2008 and just also almost like like it felt like God was intervene, intervening in my races, you know, just to keep my, yeah, first one uh, to open the door, but also the second one, the 200 meter, just to to lift up my, my, my legs to go to go over the line, you know, because I mean, with, with if you start getting spasms, um, you know, it's quite easy to run with that. Um, yeah, so so it was yeah really really good memories. Not many people, well, hardly anyone gets one Olympic uh, games under their belt, let alone two. You got three. Uh, uh, meanwhile, you won Commonwealth gold in Glasgow as well in 2014. But but I want to focus on on London 2012 and Rio 16. Um, it's a long time to be at the top. Uh, and so when you get uh, four years in, you're in London, uh, you, you're right at the top of the tree. You manage to reproduce your form uh, and win gold in the 100. Uh, again, a very rare achievement to retain the gold at Olympic level. The 200 on this occasion, uh, I've heard you talk about this, and I'd love I'd love our listeners and viewers to, to hear you on it because... This was a real, uh, a real impactful moment in in your faith and career, right? Because it didn't quite go on, to say the least. Yes, yeah. So I think um, with the two hundred meter, I was the first South African athlete uh, to compete. So there was a lot of ex expectation because of me being ranked first. I had the world record at the time. Um. And just on paper, everything said, I can do this, you know, like, like this race, I can, I can win this. Um, so going into the race, very confident. Um, I remember a crazy thing, walking out onto the track. You also think you, you, um, uh, you know, you're quite experienced because you've, you've been here before, but stepping out onto that track, um, the, the great Britain girl won their first medal. And she was doing a victory lap uh, on a wheelchair around the track. And the, the crowd just went crazy. As I walked out onto the stadium, uh, you know, onto the track, the crowd just started going crazy. And it didn't stop. Like, so it was as if my emotions just left me. I couldn't control it. Uh, but in any case, uh, onto the 200 meter, came into the, the, the straight, um, being in front. 
uh, for the, yeah, up, up until like the last 50 meters, I was in front. And then, so yeah, from 150 to 200, um, yeah, to the last 50, I, five people came past me. So I ended up being sick in, in that race. And it, it really just felt as if my whole world just started came cr crumbling down, you know, like it, it was as if you could hear a, a, a needle drop, yeah, on the, um, athletic stand. Um, yeah, I just, and I, I remember just lifting my hands and walking off the track, you know, um, but I think, yeah, for me, why it was so impactful was I went back to my room that night and just this race, you know, keeping like playing, uh, in my head over and over. And, and I, I knew that God wanted to speak to me. So I just went to go and, and now you must also remember the games have started, so everyone is now hyper focused. Um, so, so yes, so I was sitting outside, um, and God just said to me, But, but, funny, I love you because you're my son and not because you can win medals, and I'm proud of you. And, 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 and that's there, like, like knowing that all my years I've tried to, to perform to get that acceptance and to be someone. And, and now I didn't, I didn't have anything to give, you know, and, and basically all I had was for the next few days, I had my worship to give God. And, and I just worshiped God that for, for the next three days, I would just put on worship and worship him, not having anything to give, but worship. And, and that was such a amazing restoration where God really restored me. It was as if that race didn't even happen, you know, like, so, and I had a week, so I, I was, I opened the games and I finished the games and that was, yeah, in that week, it was, yeah, just amazing to, yeah, to, to spend time with God and just even, you know, just to be around people and talk about what happened. But I, I said to myself, I'm not going to go back to that race, like, and, and kind of, you know, try and, and analyze the race. I only did the, the an, analyzing after the race, but I could tell people up into the detail what happened through that race. You know, people would, would love to just sit and, and listen to that because it was very clear in my head what happened, when, what happened. So, yeah, that was really a crazy experience. But 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 I think the big thing was that I knew that, that running the 100, um, lining up on the 100, that... God's love for, for, for me will not change, even if I had to, to, to fall in front of the line. You know, that was my first experience with uh, athletics. And uh, when I ran when I was six years old, before school, when I, I ran, I was in front, but I fell in front of the line. So I said to myself, even if that had to happen, God's love for me would not change. And that gave me a lot of confidence, super confidence. And finding my identity in Christ and being his son, not in you know, can I perform well or not? Um, it doesn't mean that it's not pressure. It doesn't mean that, you know, now everything is sorted. It's almost like an onion where you need to peel, you know, you need to peel that, that to stay in that identity and to really hold on that identity. It's not something that's just, it's there and now you sort it, you know? Um, yeah. Bunny, it's, it's, it's really helpful. Uh, and, I wouldn't mind spending the last few minutes we have together then talking but because of what you've just articulated for us, um, how in 2016 Rio, you take the bronze in the hundred, but at this stage now you're, you know, you've been a long time at the top of the tree and you start um, yeah. being in a different direction. Um, as we heard at the beginning, uh, you run, uh, inspired to become with your brother, Chris. Um, uh, we'll talk about that work in just a moment, but your impact on athletes around the world since you stepped back from competing on the international stage has been significant, uh, across, across the disciplines and across the people uh, that we know around the world, uh, because you can tell stories like this, like the one we've just heard from you. Um, talk about the transition out of full-time athletics and, and how you found navigating. Yeah. So I think I, 
what was great was I had four years to to just prepare myself for this journey, like like leaving athletics. Um, you know, and it was like I always thought like it will be it will be fine. I'll you know it, it would be an easy transition, but it was very difficult. Like leading up to twenty sixteen, it was as if I didn't want to let go. You know, like I was. It was as if I wanted to hold on to what God has given me because it's mine now. And I remember I couldn't sleep the night before I my my last race. And and God, like I knew God wanted to speak to me, so I went outside, and 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 started speaking to God, and He said to me, I I, I need to let go of athletics because um you know if if I if I don't it will it will break me, and I said to Him, but it's mine. I've worked for this for twelve years. I'm not just gonna let it I let it go now, and and also in the back of my mind it was that that gold medal, um, because because it would have been then three consecutive times getting that the the gold for the hundred, um, and and God then just said to me, let's go back. Where were you 12 years ago? And he took me back to that little boy, not having anything to live for. I mean, not not no no career in sports. And God saying, here's the gift. And I realized then it was this beautiful gift that God has given me. And he showed me that that he's going to move on now. So it was, what, what he showed me that I can choose. I either move on with God or I stay with the ladies, but God's not going to be in it. So that was such a clear picture for me and such a, a humbling experience as well. Saying, of course, God, I'll, I'll give it up. You know, like, so that was the moment I'm, I said, Yes, Lord, I'm I'm gonna give it up, and I because I want to go with you. I knew that 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 athletics was blessed because of God. He was in it, and so it was such a like, yeah, exciting thing as well. You know, knowing that I'm going with God and I'm leaving athletics behind. You know, and and I think it's it's so crazy because when I left athletics, it was it was almost like you know just a season of my life that God gave me athletics. But it wasn't, and and now it was gone again. You know, so now it's behind me, and and it's it's something that God almost just used to shape me, give me experience. But now we're going, you know. Uh, so almost like a pit stop for my life, if I can say it like that, in in all respect. Um. But yeah, so so yeah, very crazy moment, you know, to 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 let go, mm-hmm. um, and just almost the last. Yeah, race as a as a thank offering, um, just to go and run and give it everything I have, you know. And and it was an amazing experience seeing my my training partner shoulder to it taking the gold. Um, where in that last season we him and me were fighting it at out, then I will win, then he will win, you know. Him taking taking the gold on the last race, and yeah, you know, myself and and Muhammad. Um, going for because we had the same time, uh, eleven five four. You got the silver, I got the bronze. Yes. So that's twenty sixteen Rio. Um, you've had a huge impact, both with Inspired to become in your own country, uh, working on alternative action sports and athletes with disabilities, uh, particularly for you, with visually and intellectually impaired children. Um, and as I indicated earlier, you've been able to be a terrific mentor to numerous athletes around the world through the sports movement that we belong to, the Christian sports movement. Uh, where are you at today? Uh, how do you see the, where things are at today and what the Lord's got for you and is doing with you? Yeah, I think just to, to maybe mention as well, um, when me and my brother started uh, Inspired to Become, um so we we really felt that um, you know with with the talents or the things God has given us, we want to make an impact. You know, growing up, I really wanted to to play sports with my brother Chris, and he was always like this guy that you know very talented in 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 most things or everything that he did. So always looking up to him, but but in a sense he was never a good mentor. Um, only when he found the Lord, then he turned like that, and he was the most amazing mentor and brother that you could ask for. Um, and now God just changed that. So, so my desire to really play sport with him, 
um, at the end, God really satisfied that that desire of my heart because now we we started ministry together um being in in the same team for god um and now doing ministry together and seeing that and and just running with him you know that race um yeah instead of trying to compete against him um yeah so it really just played out so well and amazing how god can also in that sense just change things around and but yes, I think, you know, um, for the last few years, just being being part of, um, you know, developing youth at schools. Um, so so intellectual school, a school for, for visual impairment. And then at my local club, uh, different disabilities uh, coming, mostly youth, but I'm also focusing a lot now on a bit more senior athletes because of the youth guys growing, growing into senior um, yes, and just, you know, being able to spend time with them on, on a daily basis and, and just also, you, you know, as you would uh, travel in a team um, when I was an athlete, now I can travel with a team um, as a coach uh, for, for a big, bigger group of people and, and mostly youngsters. Um, but yes, just so, so being involved and really seeing people grow and, you know, also that thing of so... Because a lot of the time, uh, people with disabilities, they don't really see um, sometimes the hope or the opportunities. So it's a lot of the times almost like getting a second chance, um, you know, and, and seeing people grabbing that with everything they have and just going full out with that is really you know, something that, that inspires me and that I, I really want to see the youth, you know, um, you know they get that opportunities. Now, funny. You your story is inspirational because uh, you certainly grabbed an opportunity which came straight in front of you as a 17 year old and and really ran with it and, and continue to do so to today thanks for being inspirational to many of us uh, all around the world from your Stellenbosch base uh, we wish you well we wish you and Chris well uh, and thanks for your time today yeah well, thanks so much Graham it was really a pleasure to be with you and to just yeah share, share my story